Oh man, I want to download my favorite GameCube ROM, Star Fox Adventures, the objectively best Star Fox game in the series, but my homework folder is taking up too much space. What do I do? Well, luckily, today I have just the solution for that very problem. I'm going to show you the most important part of my ROM collection, my NAS. No, not that, my network attached storage. This very device is the backbone of the collection because it's where I store all 5 terabytes of my own ROMs on. My goal will be to show you the benefits of buying or creating your own NAS for your own ROM collection, as well as how to get started. So stay tuned and join me as I teach you a bit more about this wonderful machine. So first of all, what the heck is a NAS? NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It is essentially a computer on the network that is dedicated to storage. Depending on the hardware we use, we can stack it with up to as many hard drives as I have fingers, which is at least five. Most NASs will also let us combine these hard drives into one big storage pool, usually using RAID. Meaning, if we could connect five 5 terabyte drives to a computer, we could get up to a whopping 25 collective terabytes to store ROMs on. That's a lot of homework folders. The NAS can then be reached from other computers on the network via various protocols, some of the more common ones being SMB for Windows and NFS for Linux or Mac. The cool thing is the computer that you're connecting to basically sees it as yet another hard drive. Also, even our phones nowadays can reach a NAS via the native file apps. Anyways, now that you have some context, why use a NAS for a ROM collection? Well, for starters, it is another location that we can store files in. Say, for example, your main drive is 99% full of ROMs of every region's Luigi's Mansion. True story, by the way. And you really don't want to delete your 500 gigabyte homework folder. What do you do? Well, you can move your ROMs over to your NAS to free up storage for the necessary things. Another cool thing you can do, since the OS sees the NAS as a drive, is run games off it. For example, in the Dolphin emulator, I can point it to a folder that stores my ROMs on the NAS. This will load the games on the main menu and I can actually click on them and start playing even though they're not technically stored on my computer. And from my experience using it, the games honestly didn't feel any different in the way that they ran. Just to show you, the next 30 seconds is Luigi's Mansion running off my NAS over a local gigabit connection. <laughs> Also, though this video is about ROMs, you can also point Steam to a game library that's on your NAS. This will allow us to store games on the NAS, again, just like we would on a drive connected to our computer. Doing this actually makes it easier to share games in the event of a LAN party or something like that. And I know what you're thinking, couldn't I just do all of that already with another direct attached drive? Well, yeah, but you gotta remember, because of the centralization of the storage, you can do all of the previous things from many computers on the network. Meaning that once the NAS is in place, connecting from your laptop, phone, MacBook, or whatever is as easy as getting on the network and putting in a password. There is no need to deal with pesky cables, adapters, or figuring out the logistics that would happen when attaching a hard drive directly. Anyways, now that you've seen some uses of a NAS, how do you get started? Well, there are two ways you can, you can do that. The first is to buy a NAS, and the second is to create one. If you're going to buy a NAS, I would recommend something like a 4Base Synology that you can find on sites like Newegg or Amazon. There are plenty of benefits when it comes to store-bought NASs. Most people really enjoy the Synology's ease of use and simple setup. The warranty is pretty good and will cover any repairs in the event of an issue. Also, just having access to a support line when you're hitting your head against the wall with a technical issue is a godsend. However, the caveat to buying a NAS is that it may cost you a pretty penny. And since I'm a DIY guy, it's a satisfying feeling knowing I am using something that I built. So for that reason, I will show you how to build one. Before I get started, I need to ensure I have a couple things. The first thing I need is a computer. This should be something that can handle as many hard drives as you want, as well as allow for expansion if, again, that's something that you want. For my computer, I will be using this old Dell Precision 5810 an old office computer that has long seen its retirement. 
You may recognize this from the last video and might be wondering if you've been bamboozled, hoodwinked, or smackledorfed. But I have actually converted that project into a virtual machine, which I can expand on in a future video. One of the beauties of computers and what I try to aim for in this channel is to show you how we can repurpose tech to do more than meets the eye. Or in this case, taking a computer that was once meant for one thing and making it do another thing. Therefore, I will be reusing this computer. Anyways, moving forward, this bad boy will allow me to attach two hard drives as well as add in another additional SSD for the OS drive. The next thing I need, like I said, is storage. You can use hard drives, SSDs, flash drives, just kidding, don't do that. As for me, I have two six terabyte hard drives that I will be using for this project. The last thing I need are my peripherals and accessories to install the NAS operating system. This will be a keyboard, mouse, monitor, and a flash drive with the NAS OS I will be flashing onto the computer. The NAS OS of choice I will be using is TrueNAS, which is free and open source. Once I start the build, I ensure that all my drives are connected properly to the precision, as well as add in another extra 256 GB SSD that I'll be using for the OS drive. I will be leaving it hanging, and while some people might think that's weird, I'm actually okay doing this because SSDs don't have any moving parts that could be damaged. But if you are going to do that, do it at your own risk, because if something does break, I don't want to be blamed. <laughs> Anyways, once all my parts are in and connected to the precision, I grab my peripherals and connect my flash drive into the machine. I also ensure I connect my network cable to the back of the precision because once TrueNAS is installed, we will be configuring it through a web browser. From here, I press the shortcut key for the boot menu and then click on the flash drive. The TrueNAS installation splash screen will pop up and I press the one key to load into the TrueNAS installer. The next screen that comes up is the setup menu where I will again press the one key to install TrueNAS onto my SSD. And the last thing I need to do here is put in a secure password that we will be using to log in with the root account to the web portal once TrueNAS is fully installed. So after that, we let TrueNAS install, and while I'm waiting, I use that time to reach Moog and Elden Ring. Unfortunately, I bought the DLC and still have to get over there, so I haven't been able to start it. Pour one out for me, please, because I've heard it's going to take at least five or six hours before I can even get started. <laughs> Anyways, getting back on topic, once TrueNAS finishes installing, the computer will reboot and load into a menu where it will show an IP address. With this IP address, I can enter it into my web browser on any other computer on my home network to configure the NAS. Here, I log in with the root account and the password that I input earlier during the TrueNAS installation. This takes me to another page where I can see the NAS specs at a glance. From here, I go to the left pane and expand storage, then pools. On this page, I can see my two available 6TB hard drives, which I add to the data VDEVs table on the right. Here is where I'll be setting my two disks to mirror themselves in case one fails. Please note that this is not a backup plan. It is more so just a way to protect against a physical hard drive failure. Remember kids, always back up your data to separate locations and mediums. Anywho, I give my storage pool a name and let TrueNAS wipe the disk and create a mirrored array of my drives. Once that job is done, I get sent back to the pools page where I can now see my new storage pool named ROM pool. From here, I add a data set named data to the storage pool and leave everything default. This will serve as our root folder that our files will sit in. The next thing I need to do is create a user, which I named DLabs. This user is how I will be connecting to the NAS. I also create a group named DLabs test because I will be adding DLabs to this group and giving the group permission to access the NAS. The reason I do it like this is in case I want to create new users and give them access to the NAS. With groups, it's as easy as clicking a button and adding any users I want to the group. Anyways, once I give the group permissions to the dataset, the last thing I need to do is enable the network services that other computers will be using to access the NAS. For now, I will be enabling SMB and NFS, which, like I said earlier, are common protocols that are used on many platforms. And there it is, a configured NAS. Now, to test, I go on my personal Windows computer and pull up File Explorer. In the search bar, I type two backslashes followed by the IP address of the server and click Enter. Windows will then bring up another window where I put in my DLabs user credentials I created earlier. Once authenticated, the data folder we also created earlier pops up. And once I click on that, I am now inside the NAS and ready to use my storage. Woohoo! From here, I can do anything I can regularly do in Windows files and folders. So, I create a ROMs folder and test it by moving my precious Luigi's Mansion's ROMs inside. And it works! My NAS is up and ready to be filled to the brim with all of my ROMs. Overall, a NAS is a worthy investment if you have a ROM library that will keep on growing and growing. There are many perks to building a NAS like centralization and compatibility across devices that make it worth it. 
Also, if you're building one over buying one, it's a fun project that may help you learn a thing or two. But let me know what you think. Do you think a NAS is right for you and your ROM collection? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, this has been fun. My name is Dennis, and I will see you all in the next one.